Portland is a beautiful city right on the coast of the Atlantic Ocean. My friend Ashley and I had so much fun exploring the city. We stayed in the Old Port area, so restaurants, shopping, and excursions were all within walking distance. We had a great weekend exploring the city, and I'm here to show you that you can see and do all the things in the city in just two days. Here's a couple things to keep in mind. Most places close early, so have a game plan in mind before you start down the road towards a destination. And you'll also see that we rarely got several courses at one restaurant. I really recommend trying different things at different restaurants and enjoying the walk and the sights along the way. Each place has their own specialty, so don't feel like you're tied down to eating at just one place. Are you ready for it? Here we go. If you're visiting on a Wednesday or Saturday, you must stroll through the Portland Farmer's Markets. I love living like a local for a day at our farmer's market because it allows you to see and taste the local favorites. From homegrown berries and homemade pies to freshly picked flowers and farm fresh eggs, this is the place to visit. I ended up getting some fresh honeycomb and raspberries. The flavors are just so robust and delicious and you will love being able to meet some of the local artisans and farmers that are from the area. After we got our snacks, we headed to the Back Cove Trail for a little hiking. This three and a half mile loop is one of the oldest and most popular trails in Portland and provides great views of the skyline. This beautiful lighthouse, the Portland Headlight at Fort Williams Park, holds the title for the most photographed lighthouse in the country. Ever notice the lighthouse on Red Lobster's logo? Yep, this is that same exact one. I could have stayed there for hours listening to the waves crash into the shore. And if you're feeling adventurous, you can walk down to the water along the jagged rocks and let the surf wash over your bare feet. I have to warn you, that water is a little chilly. But if you're visiting earlier in the day, you can also go into the Lightkeeper's home. It's been turned into a museum and you can tour the building to learn more about the history of the Portland Headlight. When you're this close to the water, it would be a shame not to go out on it. And we didn't just go out on it, we went lobstering. I cannot recommend Lucky Catch Cruises enough. We had the best time. I've always wanted to see how lobster were harvested and this blew my expectations out of the water. <laughs> but um ching Not only did we set traps with bait, but we also reeled in our own catches, saw different World War I forts, and learned about the sustainability the main fishermen adhere to. With every lobster caught in Maine, the lobster is measured and checked for gender and eggs. One thing I thought that was interesting was that not all female lobster reproduce. So if a fisherman catches a female lobster with eggs or like little black dots on her belly, the fisherman marks her tail and puts her back into the ocean. This ensures that future fishermen won't keep her and the lobster population will still be able to grow. Also, female lobster can reproduce until death, and since lobster can live up to be 100 years old, that's a lot of lobster babies she could produce.
Once we hauled in our catch, we walked our lobster next door to the Portland Lobster Company. There, they steamed the lobster and we were able to eat what we caught. You can't get much closer from sea to table than that. First of all, I'm in love with the look of the Avicia. This restaurant's got a 1920s flair about it and it perfectly sets the stage for some amazing cocktails. The bartenders are super friendly and knowledgeable as well, so if you don't see something you like on the menu, they can craft something to your specific tastes. Another big day of sightseeing means you're going to need some sustenance to start your day off right. We loved having brunch at Rigby Yard. The breakfast charcuterie was the perfect way to mix and match the local ingredients. My friend Ashley loves to shop, so shop we must. The whole Old Port area has tons of shopping options to choose from and everything you could ever want. From housewares and kitchen gadgets to souvenirs and lobster hats, you can find it all. So I recommend you start on 4th Street. It's got some great shops and cute items. Then you'll want to head over to Seabag's Main. I love this company's mission. Instead of sailors throwing out old worn out sails, they can bring them to sea bags where the company makes the sails into purses and bags of all shapes and sizes. The vintage bags feature the number and symbol patterns from the sails while the other bags have printed symbols on them and are a bit cheaper than the vintage. They're just so unique. If you're a lover of Downton Abbey and the early 1900s, then this is the place for you. The Victoria Mansion was built in 1860 and this beautiful home was one of the first in Maine to have indoor sewer and plumbing, hot and cold water, and a 25 foot skylight. The man who had it built, Ruggles Morse, was a self-made man only completing second grade schooling and he prospered through his own hard work, which you can see in all of the personal touches in the home. While I couldn't video inside the home, I did want to show you a few photos I took inside. I have always wanted to go on a sailboat, and this was my chance. I mean, when in Maine, right? We boarded the Timberwind and sailed out of the harbor. Once away from the dock, the passengers were able to volunteer to help hoist the sails, and let me tell you, they were heavy. I still know nothing about sailing or the commands they called out or the difference between port and starboard, but I totally enjoyed myself. Once out on the water, we floated along, enjoying the breeze and watching the seals play in the water. We saw three that day, which apparently was not common. But the boat wasn't packed and everyone was able to move around the ship freely. We were also able to bring snacks and drinks on board so you could easily make this a romantic date or family picnic on the water and have a great time. This cruise also requires reservations to be made in advance. If you're tired of seafood already, do yourself a favor and head into Anthony's. 
This family-run Italian restaurant features all the favorites with a red sauce that's to die for. They have pizza, pasta, sandwiches, and salads, but you really can't beat their lasagna. Also, if you're there on a Saturday night, they have a buffet and a dinner show. Luna is a brand new cocktail bar on the roof of the Canopy by Hilton that just opened about three weeks ago. This swanky upscale bar features gorgeous views of the harbor and specialty cocktails that are simply divine. If you're a fan of tequila and a little heat, I recommend getting a Dioscuri. I have definitely fallen in love with the East Coast this summer. From my trip to Boston last month to this trip to Maine, I have been blessed to have seen some beautiful sights and eat some amazing foods. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you can get more vacation tips for your next trip.